One day I woke up and I realized that it's the right time. VR is finally going to take, I said VR is going to finally take off and I have something here that I can't ignore. If I let this pass me by, I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life. And I said, that's it. I have to go out and get out of school. I need to start this company and I need to get these things out there to the world. The Rift actually looks a lot like a pair of ski goggles. With normal ski goggles, you put them on and you can look around in the real world. With the Rift, you take the goggles, you plug them into your computer that's running a compatible game, and now it's like you're inside of the virtual world. You can look up, you can look down, and all of the motion sensors report what your head is doing to the game so that it can mimic it on the screen in front of you. It makes you feel like you're looking through, through a pair of maybe a pair of uh, ski goggles into this virtual world, even though in reality you're just sitting in your bedroom. I think education is going to be one of the biggest uses of virtual reality. There's also applications in architecture, uh, emergency responder training, all kinds of medical, medical imaging and training. But education is going to be one of the biggest ones because right now our education system is broken in that it's not teaching people the way that we're it's not teaching people the way that they most naturally learn. People don't most naturally learn by looking at things on a board or looking at a book. They learn by doing and by, to a lesser degree, seeing things. And that's why people still go on field trips. It's still a much better way to learn many things than just sitting in a classroom. Virtual reality allows you to have that experience or better but without the huge resource expenditure and the inefficiency. And think right now, if we think that it's valuable to send college students to, let's say, ancient Rome to look at ruins, if it's valuable for them to see the ruins today, what if with no expenditure and with no inefficiency they could see the ruins as they exist today, as they'll exist in the future, and as they existed at the height of the Roman Empire? That's going to be incredibly powerful. So I think there's a common misconception that virtual reality, the goal of virtual reality is to simulate reality as closely as possible. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. It's a good goal right now. But the real potential for VR is to allow us to do things that we can't do in real life, to experience things we could never otherwise experience. And our bodies are actually pretty limited. If perfect VR happens, where we can simulate reality, why can't it go a step further? Why can't we have better vision? Why can't we move faster? Why can't we see faster? Why can't we move through spaces in ways that are physically impossible? We've got a long way to go before we can have VR that's better than reality. But that should be the goal, not to simulate what we have now, but to allow us to do things we could never do otherwise. Even with our current hardware, a lot of it is understanding how the mind works and how the brain perceives reality. Our current headset, we've we do a lot of research around how do people perceive balance, how do they perceive motion, sense of vection through space. And it's critical to understand all of that, even with the primitive VR hardware we have today. We finally have VR hardware that can trick your brain into believing it's in another space. As crude as it is, and even though you consciously know, you say, well, I know I'm not technically in an environment, but you could make someone subconsciously feel and react to a virtual re environment as they would a real one. Um, but that's going to get more and more important the better VR gets because the better it gets, uh, the less we're going to be able to do by just brute forcing with technology and the more we'll have to do with deeply understanding the human brain. Perfect virtual reality, if and when it ever happens, is going to have some very interesting implications for society. Uh, what is scarcity if everything can be digitally reproduced and everyone can have anything? What point is there in having luxury goods if Everybody can have those. You can do things that are impossible in real life, allow people to experience things that are impossible in real life, and it could end up being that the virtual world is a much more interesting world to live in than the real world. I don't know. I'm one of those people that believes in it more than almost anybody, so it sounds biased, obviously, but I really do think VR, if it goes to its perfect conclusion, could be the most important technology in the history of man.